a, uh, a, a, an anti-polling parable, and this is a perfect example of one. An enemy did this, and the servant said to him, then you want, you want to go us and gather? And he said, no, lest in gathering and tell you shall root up the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest, we know the meaning of this, at the time of the judgment, <laughs> I will say to the reapers first, gather the tares, bundle them in, and, 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 and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So, you know, um, this is really uh, 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 interesting material in Matthew 13. I don't know if time. you can, uh, more about the righteous, line 43. The righteous shall shine forth like the sun in the kingdom. He that it hears, let him hear. Again, the scroll material, I will unstop your ears. And uh, so it shall be, line 49. At the end of the world here, it's a net symbolism. The kingdom of heaven, line 47, is like a net thrown into the sea and gathers together uh, fish of every kind. And drawing to the shore, they gathered in containers and threw out the bad. So it shall be at the end of the world, we will throw out the bad into a furnace of fire. So the, 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 this is not a very pe pa uh, peaceful Jesus here. It's pretty aggressive Jesus, pretty militant Jesus. Okay. Now, in um, chapter 14, um, we have Jesus, uh, and this is the prelude to the uh, toilet bowl material that I've already done with you. First, we have Herod's birthday party, and John's head being brought on a platter from 10 to 11, 14, 10 to 11. And... John did many mighty works, 14.2. What kind of works? Not curings and raisings, I, 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 I imagine, but maybe that's what's implied. Anyway, <coughs> so Jesus is on a ship in the Sea of Galilee, line 13. Let's get this. Uh, so now we can start if I can find 14.13 here. So I can follow this along. Let's see. See, the, if you, the problem here is that every okay, fourteen, thirteen. So he's on us. I'll, I'll switch over to the parallels here now. Jesus on a sea in the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> we'll follow Matthew unless we feel Mark or Luke or this is parallel by John. Most of what we've had has not been parallel by John. And the multitudes uh, heard their him, and then he went to a desert place. So it's another of those exoduses into the wilderness to show them the signs. Remember, where do we have those passages about these uh, agitators, pseudo prophets? Jesus. Josephus, two or three times, both in the antiquities and in the war. Find those things, because that's what carries. So this is another signs uh, episode in the wilderness. And uh, Mark has it on line 31. Come ye therefore apart in a desert place. Which is a little bit different than the way, uh, than the way uh, Matthew puts it. For uh, John 6, apparently, I have it as a parallel to John 6, 1 to 15. It's at Passover time, which makes it even more miraculous and important because Passover is always a good time. So it's like an exodus, and he's going up on the mountain like Moses on, uh, in Mount Sinai. And, um, you know, I'm not sure how closely uh, John follows this, or do you have John follow, uh, paralleling it in your synopsis? Yeah. So it's a desert place. Again, Matthew repeats in 15. Same in Mark. I'll just give you the line number, 32. And uh, for uh, Luke, you see the, well, it's interesting. Jesus goes up to the mountain in John, and he sat with his disciples. Often, you often wonder, what's the difference between the disciples and the twelve? See, for Luke, it's the twelve. So these things have the, always these slight variation. I can't explain everything to you. 
But notice how unfriendly, if you like, or clearly not Palestinian, not to put it kindly, John is. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, you know, a Jew wouldn't write that way. That just wouldn't be. You say, well, suppose he's writing to a, a, a foreign audience. He'd say, well, Passover, our feast. I don't think you'd ever say, oh, Passover, what the Jews celebrate. That, 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 that's it's just not the way, uh, you know, it's like Thanksgiving, what the Americans celebrate. That's a non-American. Not we don't celebrate it, and it's nothing to do with us. It's perfectly right. So you know, that's how I judge the thing. Internal evidence. Now John's supposed to be one of the Jewish apostles. No, I don't think the writer is. John certainly probably was, but I don't think the person who's writing this in the name of John. Anyway, that's for you to determine. That's a point. You have to wait. Jesus, therefore, lifting up his eyes, following John, seeing the great multitude coming up to him, said to Philip, Where to buy the bread to eat? This he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Well, again, it's like uh, another of those uh, Judas Iscariot type episodes to see if the guy is really faithful or not. That's how John is presenting it all. Uh, the only interesting parallel in John here is the baskets and the numbers and the barley leaves and so on. That's what we're going to try to look at here. So let's just leave John apart with all the Philip, the problems of Philip and Simon that, and Peter that he introduces into the narrative. The test one and see who's more faithful and so on. That's not in the other one. Right? That, so John isn't really a parallel. It's a different narrative line. So let's go back to Matthew 15. The place is a desert, and he sent the multitudes away. I've already told you that in the, the scrolls, the rank and file of the community are called the... The rank and file of the community are called the what in the scrolls? The rabbi, the many multitudes. So uh, that's the actual word in the Dead Sea Scrolls for the general membership of the community. So I think it's being reflected here. That's another choice you have to make. Is it reflected here or isn't it? You have to be the arbiter of this. You're looking for the historical Jesus. Your historical Jesus may be different than mine. And that's what we all have to reckon. There's no final word on this. Okay. Anyway, so that they could go and buy food for themselves. 